Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, it's the last of the four I was commissioned to do for them, so make sure you check out the link in the description below if you would like to have two months of premium membership for free, and if you'd like to know more about Skillshare itself, then wait until later in the video and I'll talk a little bit more about them. Hi everyone! So you already know what this video is about, it's in the title. I have decided to try painting with acrylics again. I think the last time I painted with acrylics was when I was 18, um, so almost 11 years ago now. So this should be fun! <laughs> Back then I was still in school and in fact the only reason I had acrylics at the time and was using them at all was because they were part of the supplies that we had to buy for art class and we had a few paintings to do for like the last exam of the year and stuff and you know what? I still have those tubes <laughs> And at this point, I, I'm, I'm a little bit scared of opening them <laughs> because they might have developed their own life forms by this point. Um, but that doesn't matter because we're not going to be using those. I've been wanting to try acrylic again for a little while now, so I did some research and I bought myself a small set of basic colours. I chose Liquitex for literally no other reason than they had an affordable starter set available. And I also got myself a set of muted colours because Liquitex completely reeled me in with their marketing over Christmas. <laughs> and I'm a sucker for a good set of muted colours, as those of you who are familiar with my work will probably already have noticed. Actually, I may have lied a little bit. <laughs> the last time I used acrylics was actually uh, beginning of 2019. I've had a few acrylic inks for a few years because I used to use them in my job as a prosthetic makeup artist to paint prosthetics. And so I've had quite a few tubes of them for a while and I decided I would give them a try and see what it would be like painting with them. So I did a full piece with them and it was fun but I... I, I don't think I love painting with inks and I really want to try actual, like, higher viscosity paints, basically. So I have this painting that I would like to paint in acrylics, but I'm going to need some practice first. So I started things off by doing a small study in my sketchbook. I wanted to try using the paints very loosely and in a similar way I would use watercolours. So translucently layered and really watery. My sketchbook, although it's a mixed media sketchbook, wasn't the ideal surface to use the paints like that with, um, but I mostly wanted to see how the paints would behave, since my main interest in them is linked to the fact that they don't reactivate. This study was very, very fast, very loose, and it got me excited about using the paint transparently. So that little study was lots of fun and I think it made me feel a little bit overconfident. I'm also generally a bit impatient and I made the mistake of jumping straight into the bigger painting I showed you earlier right after I finished that small study. I definitely think I jumped into it too soon at a stage when I was still quite intimidated with the medium and it made me tense up and kind of overthink everything so I ended up really disliking both the process and the result. And I made the decision a couple of days into that bigger painting to just scrap it and keep practicing some more and then start it again from scratch once I was a little bit more comfortable with acrylic. That means that I'll probably have a time lapse video of this painting at some point for my channel, but it won't be this video. In the meantime, I have been documenting the process of it on my Patreon, so if you're interested in seeing how it's all going and if you're interested in having more information about it, the link to my Patreon is in the description. After I got frustrated with my bigger piece not working out the way I wanted it to, I decided to put it aside and do some more studies and experiments with the medium. 
Something I hadn't tried in a study yet, and that had been one of the problems I encountered when painting the bigger piece, was that I was going in quite thick with the paints, without any real idea of what I was doing and what I wanted to achieve. Plus, I think I was using the wrong surface, as the piece of matting board I was using worked fine when I was using the paints thickly, but it didn't like it when I used too much water. I had decided to use the matting board in the first place because I have heaps and heaps and heaps of it, and um, it's not an expensive piece of paper that I would be worried about ruining and so it was less pressure but I think actually it just worked against me in the end. And the fact that my surface wasn't taking water as well as I was hoping it would meant I couldn't use the paints in the watercolour way I was initially intending which sent me down a spiral of frustration which in turn made me try to cover all my mistakes up by adding more paint which just made everything worse. So I decided to try another exercise, this time using a sheet of actual acrylic paper. <laughs> um, ultimately I want to use acrylic with watercolour paper, but while I get used to it, it's probably best if I make things as smooth as possible for myself. So at the moment one of the things I'm researching in my own work is how I like to paint people and how I like to paint skin tones um, and trying to find my own style in that. So I chose to do another portrait for this second acrylic exercise. I realised that I did a portrait the first time which means that my practice wasn't particularly varied but the aim with this second portrait was to paint it a lot more opaquely in contrast to the way I used them in my first sketchbook exercise. I ended up really enjoying this portrait and this painting session and I think I went about it in a better way than I did my previous bigger painting that I failed that I talked about earlier. I think with this particular portrait study I went into it without any real goal. I wasn't entirely sure I was even going to put it in this video, I just literally just wanted to practice so I got a piece of paper I didn't really care about and um, just went to town. I tried to restrict myself time-wise because the longer I spend on a painting the more chance there is of me overthinking what I'm doing especially when I'm using a medium I'm not comfortable with so I decided that every time I would become very frustrated or I would feel like I needed to add and add and add and change this and change that and every time I would start feeling this sort of um, nervous feeling inside of me I would put the painting down and step away for a few hours or even just the next day and just pick it back up once my brain was a little bit calmer which worked out really well and meant that I actually feel like this painting went quite smoothly and like there were no excessive emotional turmoil inside me happening while I was painting it which is unusual. In fact I was enjoying painting this piece so much that in the end I decided to add my own details and my own twist to the image and take it a little bit further than just a portrait study and I added my own touch to the whole thing and made it into a personal piece. So if you would like to see what this painting became in the end then stay tuned but right now I quickly want to let you know a little bit more about today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning platform that offers lots of classes ranging from uh, illustration and fine art to video editing and business and freelancing. Membership works on a subscription basis and it's really affordable. Um, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And if you use the link in the description of this video, you will get two months of premium membership for free. So you can have a look around, no strings attached, sample classes, decide whether it's a service for you. I myself use Skillshare to learn more about acrylics before I did this video and I watched a few videos by Laurie Ann Gonzalez. She's a wonderful artist, I love her landscape paintings and she's a really a teacher. She has a big range of acrylic videos that basically teach you all the fundamentals and more of acrylic painting and painting in general. I think her work is gorgeous and it was lovely to learn from her while also indirectly supporting her work. Um, so if this all sounds like your thing, make sure you check out the link in my description. Not only will the first 500 of you to use the link get two months of membership for free, but you'll be helping out my channel too. And if you find good videos that you enjoyed, do let me know, I'd love to check them out myself. And now back to that painting I was talking about. So I was enjoying that painting process so much and I was feeling so good while doing it that I was starting to feel confident enough to start going off track and do my own thing with it. So I stopped using the reference and I opened up my sketchbook to do a couple thumbnails to get a better idea of the kind of thing I wanted to add to the piece. And it turns out I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do so even just doing thumbnails helped me finalise the idea in my head but I didn't actually need to sketch out much more than I did and then I jumped straight into painting. 
And one of the things that made it very easy for me to edit that painting was the fact that acrylic does not reactivate. If I had wanted to paint that concept in gouache or in watercolour, I would not have gone about it in the way I did for that acrylic painting. I would have had to be more careful about the layers I was creating and I would have had to be more strategic and more calculated in the way I painted it. But because acrylics obviously don't reactivate and have pretty good opacity, I was able to start editing the image without any worries. I'm really happy with this little painting. I tried to keep it very loose. I tried not to blend it too much. Part of me wanted to add some more detail to the hair and the collarbone, but in the end I actually like how the neck isn't too defined in contrast to the pin and the butterfly. I think I like this sort of aesthetic, so I'm glad I didn't go in and overwork it too much. This is actually an idea I've had in my head for a little while. I've done several sketches of it. Maybe I'll do a bigger piece with it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but for now I'm I'm happy with this one. I might make it my Patreon print for February or March, I'm not entirely sure yet, I'll have to see, but I will have a post with all the reference pictures and some step-by-step -step shots, so if you're interested in seeing more of it you can go over there. But in the meantime, really happy with it and I hope you like it too. So there you go, my first go at acrylic since 2009? Thereabouts. Let's pause a second. There we go. That's a gorgeous face to pause on. Um, I'm going to be rambling a little bit about my experience with acrylics for the next couple minutes. So I actually did another little painting with acrylic and I thought I'd share it with you on screen while I ramble about my acrylic experience. That little sketch was based on a reference picture of a tiger yawning and I went straight in with acrylics. I wanted to try it out on watercolour paper so I used it in one of my watercolour sketchbooks and uh, sketched it out in acrylic, painted it really quickly in acrylic. It was a fun little painting so I thought I'd share it here so that you have something to look at other than my overexposed face. <laughs> Enjoy! To be honest, I am really enjoying acrylics. I think it's always difficult to start a new medium. There's always a learning curve and it's frustrating not to be able to use it like the stuff that you're used to. I find that getting past the fear of the fact that it's new is the biggest challenge for me. Like I mentioned in the video, I tend to become stiffer and scared and so I don't take the risks I would take with other things I'm more used to and stuff like that. But it was all sorts of fun and <laughs> all sorts of frustrating and I'm really glad I tried it. I'm most definitely going to keep using them quite a bit. I'm probably going to spend the rest of the week trying them out and then try and jump into that painting again. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And if there's a video of it later on, then it's that it went well. And if there's not, then only my patrons will get to see it. <laughs> we'll see. So far, I'm really happy I tried acrylics, but there are a few things I would like to try and add on top of that in the future. So for example, I want to get some specific acrylic brushes. The ones I've been using are the ones I use for gouache and watercolour. Some of them were watercolour brushes, most of them were mixed media brushes. Some of them may have been acrylic brushes, but basically the brushes I've been using are the brushes I love using with my gouache and watercolour and I don't want to damage them by using a medium that um, isn't like washable with water once it's dry. So I might get myself a proper set just for acrylics, just in case, and maybe some brush cleaner and take better care of them than I do. <laughs> um, I'm not very good with patience, uh, so I don't take care of things as well as I probably should, but maybe that should change. I also want to try using medium instead of water to mix my paints. I've seen it recommended a few places and uh, people say that it prevents the paint from lifting over time. I feel like that may apply to people who work fairly thickly and opaquely with acrylics but um, I might be wrong so uh, my chair keeps turning <laughs> so I 
I'm gonna try and see if I can use medium, see how that affects the paint, see how that affects the whole process and see if I enjoy it. We'll see. Um, and talking about mediums, I'm probably gonna try some retarder at some point. I don't really have much of a problem with the fact that it dries fast. That's something I've gotten used to with gouache and watercolour and although I can reactivate those two mediums to a certain degree, I did get acrylics because they didn't reactivate and I wanted them to dry fast and I wanted to be able to lay on top fairly quickly so the fact that they dry fast isn't a problem for me but it's always good to have the option it will allow me to get to learn the medium a bit better and stuff like that so I might get myself some retarder one day maybe we'll see once I've got money again <laughs> I had to pay taxes in January and it sucked all my money out of my account and now I'm I want to get a slab of glass for my palette or a slab of acrylic I've been using a piece of plastic with a uh, cello bag kind of wrapped around it which means that whenever my palette is getting too dirty I can take the plastic sleeve off so that way I have a new one on there but that's not very environmentally friendly I don't like that I, I did that for the video because I don't have a palette that I was willing to ruin by having acrylics dry on them but if I'm going to be using them more, I don't want to stay with something that's so wasteful. I would like to get something that I can just scrape the paint off of, so I might try that. Something I was really happy with, actually, that I wasn't sure was going to go well, was the palette I used to store my acrylics, the one with like all the little pots. It was really useful. There was enough pots that I could store every colour from my Liquitex like, basic range thing. I couldn't put the muted range in there but I had some extra little pots that I could put that in and it kept them fresh it's been about a week and a half they've been in there now and they are as fresh as in the tube and I have had no problems and it's so much easier to be able to carry all those little pots uh, on my palette and kind of dip into them when I need them rather than running the risk of putting some blobs of paint directly onto my palette and not using them as much as I thought and have the paint dry up and not being able to reuse it and stuff. It's definitely something I find frustrating with acrylics, is it? so I can't reuse the paints on my palette once they've dried. I find that really frustrating. <laughs> There's definitely something that I rely upon a lot when I use gouache and watercolour. I rely on the fact that I have mixed colours on my palette, that even if they dry, I can reactivate them and start continue using them. And um, I've definitely gotten into the habit of doing that with those reactivated mediums, whereas with acrylics, I obviously can't just be on my phone for 10 minutes and then come back and keep using my colours. Um. <laughs> Basically, it's frustrating me that I can't procrastinate when I'm painting with acrylics. <laughs> and then the last thing I would really like to try out are heavy body acrylics instead of fluid body. I got fluid body for this particular experiment. I want to be able to use my acrylics, as I mentioned in the video, I want to use them translucency in a similar way I would use watercolours. The fluid body acrylics work opaquely too, so I like the range that they give me. So I have one tube of golden Payne's Grey heavy body acrylic that I got in a shop because they had no fluid body ones and I wanted a tube of Payne's Grey, because obviously, and I really like this one. And I feel like it could be interesting to try having some acrylics as heavy body whenever I do want to go quite thickly. Um, again, like the Retarder, not something that I think I'll be using tons, but definitely something that I think would be an interesting thing to try out. So I might, once I get money, <laughs> try getting a few more colours maybe, uh, although the basic range so far has been good to me. I need more white. I need more white. Um, but I might try and get a few heavy body tubes at some point and see if, you know, how they compare to fluid body acrylics. And that's it for this video. Um, thank you very much for joining me for this little experiment. I'm going to have a few more weeks of normal content, so some time lapses and such. But um, I will have a big announcement video at some point in the next three or four weeks. I want to change some things about the channel quite drastically and um, I have some new plans and some new projects for it and so I'll have an announcement video where I explain all of that to you guys. My patrons already know what I'm talking about and uh, yeah, I'm excited to show you the new direction I want to go in with the channel and I hope that you'll enjoy it too. I hope that you're all really well. 
Take care everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye!